So shall we talk some OpenDNS? Yeah! What is OpenDNS? DNS. Well, DNS is a, do- a domain name service. And if you use the internet, you use a domain name service. What this does is translate the, the, the human-friendly names that we have for websites, like www.google.com or dl.tv, translate that name into the number, which is the IP address that represents the website. Instead of typing, you know, like google.com, you could type in the four-character or four-numbered Number the IP address. Yeah, the IP address instead. But you know who, who can remember all these numbers, so it's easier just to remember names. That's what DNS does for you. Normally, the service is provided automatically through your ISP. Usually, when you configure the modem, it's set up to automatically acquire that domain name service from your ISP. I found, at least in my own home doings through my own ISP, that occasionally I was running into problems where. I knew the website I was trying to reach was active. I, I knew my internet connection was working properly, but things were taking too long, and it wasn't, it wasn't taking the name I was typing in and translating it quickly enough and getting it back to me and slowing down my web browsing experience. What, what about the OpenDNS made it a better source than your ISP? This is the alternative now. Instead of using the DNS services of my ISP, I can use a what is effectively a free service called OpenDNS that they provide that takes the place of your DNS services that are provided by your ISP. They claim that they're more reliable, better security, and they offer more functionality in terms of filtering services and, uh, and being able to track usage as well. Is there, is there an installation or, or is it just configuration? The easiest way I use this service, I mean, I'm, I'm using just the basic functions of OpenDNS, and that's really, I'm just simply replacing the services, that lookup service from my ISP with this, and the easiest way I find to do that is using your router that, that splits your internet connection up through your house. And... It is literally, all you have to do is swap in two different numbers. I'll give a quick demonstration of how that works. They give you the three ways you can do it. I, this is the way I'm doing it at home, is just simply plugging in the necessary information directly into my router setup. They offer different configurations depending on what brand of router you have. I happen to have a Netgear router at home. could be any of these. They're all effectively the same. There's a couple. Once you log into your router, you're going to basically look for something like this, where it's like, hey, normally it's set to get your DNS server information directly from the ISP automatically. That's typically what it's set to, and that can work just fine in most cases. However, if you want to use this service, boom, you configure specific numbers that they provide on their website. Now, these are the two servers that they offer. These are the addresses that you would enter. They're the same for everybody in the United States. Anybody wants to do this. And once that's set, hit the apply button. You are done. That's all you have to do. You start browsing the web, and it will automatically, instead of looking at those, those domain lookups that were provided first by your ISP, it will say, oh, wait. You have these custom uh, lookups that you want to use using the OpenDNS service. And I immediately noticed the difference with my own surfing at home. So sites would pop up quicker. Sites I was having a problem with occasionally would just suddenly appear now. And I, I find for me it works just great. Your mileage may vary. You know, Try it. See if you notice a difference. It doesn't hurt. So. Now, you mentioned that your ISP didn't necessarily block something, but you're having, you weren't able to get to a site. It was, it was as if... When I typed in the address, it would just sit there and sit there and eventually time out. And I knew everything was okay on the other end and on my end, and if I could type in the IP address manually, just using the numbers, it would pop up just fine. This fixed that, just using, using a, a better, more robust DNS lookup service. Now, the other services they offer is, once you, once you have this set up, and that's, that, what I just showed you is really all you have to do, then you can get into some of the more advanced features, and they have this dashboard function. You create an account. I did this at home. I've logged in. And literally, you have services now such as, well, one, if you ever type in a bad URL, it can either automatically correct it and other things, but you can also customize that page that pops up to say, oh, we weren't sure exactly what you wanted. Here's some search results. And I actually customized it with a a custom graphic and other things like that, which, uh, you know, just fun stuff like that. But uh, you can also have custom messages as well, like there. I put the, uh, what is that, the dramatic prairie dog <laughs> face. That's my custom logo instead of having that DNS thing pop up on the web page in the case of a bad page or a message that needs to be displayed. However, if I also, uh, I also have message services as well, so say that I have a guide page I can have pop up automatically, or when a phishing site, a known phishing site has been blocked through this service, I can do a custom page as well. Like, I could remind the kids or grandma or whoever, like, if I want to block a category of web pages. These are, these are custom pages I can create that, that have, say, instead of just being the generic, oh, this is a possible phishing site, don't go there. Instead, it can say, hey, or I, customize it however you want. Yeah. Okay, basically, add, add some personalization to it. Better still is the filtering features. And this is where parents and anybody in general, like, I leave my Wi-Fi connection pretty wide open, so... 
The filtering list, you have whitelisting, which means, hey, these are sites I want permitted to go through, even, even if I blacklisted a bunch of other categories, which I'll get into in a second. But things like, I want MySpace to go through, even though I don't want anything. Any of the social networks or other something sites, like that. I could block. But yeah. the block categories, I think, is where a lot of people will uh, find it. Let me pop this up, and here we go. And it's just a whole mess of categories. Now, you're, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you were saying, uh, talking to us before and that phishing is automatic. Phishing is automatic, and I see no reason to leave that unchecked. That's just, you don't, uh, just in case. It's just good to have those, those sites that are trying to harvest information or possibly, you know, attack your accounts in some way or another. It's good to just block those. But there are, there are literally 40, 50 categories here uh-huh. of different types of sites you might want to prevent being seen. If you, if you look at the bottom right, I see tasteless. That is tasteless. just so <laughs> wide open. That's subjective. <laughs> so. However, you can then look and see what sites are actually being blocked by any of these particular filters. This appears to be a fairly robust system that is uh, user user verified uh-huh. and double checked on the back end too to make sure that things that are added are in fact appropriate for these categories. And it seems like a good thing to do. And it's all free too, so that's the other thing. Also, statistics. If you want to know what is exactly happening with your internet connection, it's especially if you're sharing it among multiple people. They have a great stats and log page, too, that I'm going to click on. And this is for my stats at home. I can enable stats and logs as well. I think they have, and I can delete data. Anyway, logging features there. They also, I thought they had, like, a straight up, oh, I should just, uh, essentially. Is it part of networks or? Might be. I can get into that in a second, mm-hmm. but. Essentially, you can, you can look at all sorts of cool graphs about the traffic, IPs that are being accessed, um, what people on your end are actually reaching out to the Internet and touching other sites as well. It, lots of cool stuff you can take care of there. And, of course, typo correction. This is something I can always use. Say you typed uh, .cm instead of .com. That will correct things like that as well. Or you typed in .og instead of .org. Little things like that. And this is one quick thing I'll bring up. If, if, if you've typed in something that it cannot guess properly. It's going to bring up a results page, and the way OpenDNS makes money is it's using Yahoo-generated search results. Uh, just for open disclosure, just to let you know, that's, that's how they do generate. When the page does pop up, the results you see are courtesy of Yahoo.com. They, I'm sure they have some deal there. Got to make money and support this somehow, and that's how they're doing it, just to say. I don't, I don't see that as a bad thing, necessarily. It's just, uh, just the way it is. And, of course, typo exceptions. If there's maybe there is a .cm site you need to see regularly, and you don't want it to keep correcting it to .com and messing mm-hmm. you up, here's where you can add that as well. And if you're not dealing with a or if you're de- not dealing with static IP addresses, they also have services too to uh, configure this properly with a dynamic IP address. That is, if your if your IP address at home changes frequently, it might be worth investigating that as well. I notice that my IP address changes infrequently, mm-hmm. so this type of setup I just described works just fine the way it is. And I gotta say, I mean, I use it strictly for performance, for enhancing the speed of my web browsing, but for the filtering features and the statistics features that are available, I think it's just worth investigating. And it's, it's free to set up, free to configure an account. You don't even need the account unless you want to uh, get, get into any of the other features I just described besides just using it as the, a domain The web tracking name, so. and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, all you have to do is cut and paste those two IP addresses into where your DNS information normally would be, and you're done. And it's that easy. Cool. And I love it. I just, it, it's, it's a good thing. And it did save me, and I did notice a difference and, w- compared to my ISP's own services. So mm-hmm. I was pretty stoked about that. Nice. Yes.